In this problem, we're going to prove that the components of a vector with respect to a given basis are unique. So what that means is that, let's say we have a vector space, let's call it V, and then within this vector space, I'm going to pull out a bunch of vectors to form a basis for this vector space. So, if, so this is a set of vectors that is going to form a basis for this vector space. That means any vector within this vector space can be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors, and all these vectors are linearly independent. So if, uh, for any uh, so for all these vectors over here, I cannot express them as a linear combination of the others. So let's say I have E1, I cannot express this as a linear combination of the others. So this is going to be the backdrop of our, of our uh, problem. So what, what this problem is asking us to prove is that, let's say we have another vector, alpha, which is also from the vector space V, and then from the, by the definition of a basis, we know that we can express alpha as a linear combination of the vectors within the basis. So let's say alpha can be expressed as a linear combination like this. So what this problem is asking us to prove is that this linear combination is unique. So there is only one way for you to set these scalars so that this entire linear combination will be equal to alpha. So the set of scalars that you're using to multiply to the basis, this set of scalars is unique. So for any given vector, there is only one possible set of scalars that you would use to multiply to the, to the vectors within the basis to obtain your linear combination, which would be equal to alpha. So we're going to have to prove that the, these scalars are unique. So what we're going to do is that we're going to use proof by contradiction. And so that means we're going to assume that it is possible to come up with a different set of scalars, which would allow us to construct another linear combination that would also be equal to alpha. And since we're using proof of contradiction, we're going to assume that this is true, and then we're going to see if this leads us to a ridiculous or contradictory uh, conclusion. If it does, then we can conclude that it was wrong for us to assume that uh, to assume that it is possible for us to come up with a different set of scalars to obtain alpha, and that would allow us to conclude that this set of scalars is unique. So that's what we're going to do. So the first step is that we're going to take these two expressions and then we're going to subtract them from each other. So for the left hand side we have the same vectors uh, subtracting each other so we just get the null vector and on the right hand side we have a1 minus b1 e1 plus a2 minus b2 e2 and so on. So this goes on all the way to an minus bn en. So uh, going back to this page over here, so you see that here we have these n scalars here over here that gives us alpha, and here we're assuming that we have another set of scalars that will allow us to form an, a different linear combination that would also give us alpha. So since we're assuming this is, that this is a different set of scalars, then we must know that some of these scalars must be different from some of these scalars over here. So let's say the jth scalar within this list is different. So let's say aj is not equal to bj. So we're choosing the jth element and let's say it's not equal. We know that there must exist some cases where the corresponding scalars are different because we are assuming that this is a different set of scalars. So there must definitely be a jth component where aj is not equal to bj. And then we're going to take this component out and then we're going to dump it to the left hand side. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take the jth uh, vector and then we're going to dump it to the left hand side. So I'm going to show you in a minute why we're doing this. So in the meantime let's just reorganize this expression. So the null vector doesn't really do anything so technically there should be a plus null vector but that doesn't do anything so we can just take it away. And so in the right hand side we have a1 minus b1 times e1 and this goes all the way to a j minus 1 minus b j minus 1, e j minus 1, and then plus, so we know that the jth component has been pulled to the left hand side, so we can just skip the jth component and go to j plus 1, so minus b j plus 1, e j plus 1, and then this keeps on going all the way to a n minus b n times e n. So going back to the left hand side over here, the reason why we're choosing the jth component is that aj is not equal to bj, that means aj minus bj is not going to be equal to zero. 
So that would allow us to divide this over to the other side. So if I divide aj minus bj over to the other side, so recall there was a negative sign uh, at the front. So if I divide this scalar over to the other side, then I will get something like this. So here the plus sign will become a negative sign because there was a negative aj minus bj. And then we have a, another aj minus bj. So you see that all we're doing is just dividing the the uh, aj minus bj over to the other side. So we have, wait, <coughs> so we have minus aj minus bj, and then here we have minus aj minus bj. So now we can, you see that we have expressed the vector ej as a linear combination of all the other vectors. So what does this mean? This means that this set of vectors are not linearly independent since I have just succeeded in expressing ej as a linear combination of all the other vectors within the basis. But in order for these vectors to form a basis, since we've started off this problem by assuming that this does indeed form a basis, that means all of these vectors must be linearly independent. So this goes against the initial assumption of our problem that this is, this is indeed a uh, that this does indeed form a basis. So that means we have arrived at, at a contradiction. So that means this assumption assumption leads us to a contradiction. So what must be true is that this assumption must be false. It must not be possible for us to come up with an alternate set of scalars which would also allow us to form a linear combination that is equal to alpha. So what that means is that we have essentially proven our claim that this set of scalars is, uh, is unique.